Hey guys, welcome back to our next tutorial video. We're going to be doing some expanding on this room and some more construction, but first we need to take a look at the texture browsing window. And how you open that is over here to the right in the texture window. You click browse and you get this window. Now you can maximize that of course, but if not you can move that smaller so you can see. So what we need to look at first is this here the size so we have one to one relation which is probably where you want to keep it but you can see that the textures are different sizes so keep that in mind but we can also sort of use these other 32 by 32 64 by 64 and that's just kind of resizes them into a more palatable version so it's up to your your liking really but i like to keep it at 100 percent and that gives you a size of the scale. Along the top here, we have these little tabs. And something to know if you don't already know is that the textures are contained in files called .wad. Some people call them wads or wads. And the majority of Half-Life's textures are in this halflife.wad. But there's a few others, others that are included. We have the Xeno wad, which is basically all your Zen textures. There's a liquids wad, which is, you guessed it, water and other liquids. There's a decals wad. This has all your effects that you can plant on the walls or the floors or wherever you want to. Blood, signs, etc. And you'll, you'll use these specifically with the apply decal tool, this guy off to the left here. There is a zhlt.wad. Um, which I believe is just included with the build programs or Jack itself. These serve all serve special purposes and we don't need to get into that. But I, I want to mention one last thing about the WAD files. So if you wanted to include a custom texture, you would go into Tools, Options, Game Profiles, Textures, and then you can add them in here. So we'll close out of that. Go back into the browse texture window. You can just go through all textures and that way you can browse because it just keeps it all in one place. But it's important because we want to know exactly how to efficiently find textures because there is a lot. Now the original developers did a good job or a decent job with categorizing these by name. So there's a couple different names here. You'll learn these so you don't have to commit them to memory, but you'll see them when you dig through the this uh, window. First is Babtech. And this is sort of like a basement type texture. Various things like that. They also have a lot of them categorized by the actual map name. For example, C1A0, which is one of the maps you'll notice. Textures that were included in the first chapter there. This continues for a while, C1A1, um, but if you just do C1A, you can also get a broader selection of that. C2A has some textures later in the game. You can see some outdoor textures. Um, this looks like questionable ethics right here. Next is Crete, short for concrete. I use this, this section a lot. It's got some good concrete looking textures. Another one, is the you type in the word 50s and here we see the office textures so we're th talking about office complex and as well as you see these old sort of 50s style computers next is generic and it's just got a bunch of useful things here we have some rock textures which we don't normally see in half-life just like it sounds generic some iron work here some steel grating, the soda machines. We see the Lambda Complex gate here. Next is Lab. Just looking through these, we get more of the anomalous materials, lab, walls, so that's useful. A lot of computers. And we'll keep going. We have out, short for outside. I use this one a lot and this is for, these are textures that you'd see in surface tension. Here we have these ground textures, the desert, 
some decent uh, concrete ones you can use, some asphalt, more rock, plenty of rock, brick walls. So that's handy. Next is sign. These are all the, you guessed it, the signs that you can use. So if you need to find something to maybe just decorate your map a bit, you can use the signs. Next is silo. And this is what you'd see in blast pit as well as residue processing. So this is pretty handy for that industrial look. Next is tech. Here's some alien tech as well as some, it also includes the bab tech. So that's handy as well. If you wanted to make a Zen style map, you could use some of these. Next one is TNNL, short for tunnel. We also get another batch of concrete textures. It's another one that I use a lot. Some good concrete flooring, sort of like a road here with a drainage pipe. Some more rock. Here we see this is sort of brown rock instead of the red rock we're used to. And these are all included with the original Half-Life game. Next is crate. And that's going to be useful for all the breakable and pushable crates, including the uh, container that we see sometimes. And then finally we have Zen or Xeno. We'll just do Zen. And it's more Zen textures. These are the more of those biological looking ones rather than the tech ones. So you can use that if you're making a Zen map. So now, get those categories out of the way, there are some special characters that we need to be aware of. Textures with these special characters are going to have special properties in-game. First one is the open curly bracket. And you'll notice with this, all these textures start with the open curly bracket, and they all have these blue areas. Here's like ladder, for example, or over here we have the razor wire or a graded fence. So with these, we can tell the game to not render the blue areas and instead make it see-through. This is also shared with the decals as well. So the white areas would be ignored and you could place these decals on the wall. The other one is the exclamation point. And you can see that's all the liquids. So when you put a texture that begins with an exclamation point into the map, it will automatically become a water area that you'd be able to swim through. You don't have to do anything beyond that. However, there are, we can set these to a water en entity, which we'll go over later. There's the tilde, um, and this can kind of be ignored, but what, for now, what this is though is lights. And uh, this is used for texture lighting, which we won't focus on soon, uh, anytime soon because we'll be using regular lighting, point-based lighting. But uh, the original Half-Life game used texture lighting, which automatically made these textures glow. So that's what the tilde is for. The next is scroll. So these will be all the scrolling textures. See, we have the conveyor belt. And we see these alien conveyors. And also some scrolling liquids, so you can make waterfalls with those. And I'll show you what that looks like. So any texture with scroll at the beginning will automatically create the scrolling effect. And Jack has a built-in functionality to actually render that in the editor. So as you can see, I put that in there and it's automatically scrolling. So that's pretty cool. So let's undo that. And we'll go back in. Next is the plus zero. And you'll see a lot of them start with plus zero, plus one, plus two, and plus three, plus four. And what these are is it creates an animated texture. So a good example would be the flicker monitor or flicker mon. So if I type in that, you see we have 10 textures here. That's the maximum amount that you can use for an animated texture, you see it's plus zero all the way through plus nine. So I'm just gonna pick one at random here and apply it to the wall and we can see it creates a animated texture, in this case, the flickering monitor. So that's pretty cool. 
So let's go back in here. Next is, uh, in addition to the plus zero, some of them have a plus A, and that stands for activated. So if I were to type in switch, we see this has a plus zero and a plus A. So if I was would put the plus zero in game and create a button, when the button's activated, it'll automatically switch the texture to the plus A. So that's useful, um, you know, for making visual designation of a switch being turned on. In addition to the plus textures, there are minus textures. So minus one. So let's look at a example here. Silo two underscore wall one. You see this silo texture. Uh, this one's used in uh, apprehension with the ichthyosaur as well as in the residue processing. Now with the exception of the one here, that's, this doesn't have any minus number, so this one is just standard. But these six, if I were to use one, when the level is ran in-game, it will randomly assign one of these tiles to uh, the texture. And that's a interesting feature of the game, and that kind of creates less repeat of textures, which is kind of a cool effect. Uh, I will note that in Half-Life Source, this was not implemented. So this is a Half-Life 1 only feature. Now, if you remember the last map and when we ran it, we saw that this what went into effect. So let's see if we can find that uh, texture there. Actually, you know what? Here, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's fix that. So here we go. This texture here, I'm highlighting that and I'll show you how I did that. Just click the texture application mode and left click to select and it automatically brings up the texture that's being used. So you can see it starts with minus one. So that's why when we ran it, we had a bunch of different things. We have saw the valve, the pipes, the vent. So if I go to browse, and this one's called out underscore wall three, we'll see those options. So out underscore wall three, and we have these five. So it's randomly putting one of these five textures into place. In that case, I didn't want that, so let's go ahead and put that back to normal. Let's see if we can find the other one like that. So we're just looking in the out wall subcategory. We have out wall seven or in the seven A, but we're just going to do seven. This one does not have the minus, minus one or any minus number associated with that. So let's uh, replace that. So now I can show you how to replace textures all at the same time. So we're going to select the one that's in use, the minus one, and we're going to do replace. And we can pull up the browse as well. And there it still has it here. So I'll select the out wall seven. And notice this one has the black uh, grime at the bottom. So we'll see that we'll see that all of the textures will be changed when I hit OK. And they're all changed. 20 textures. And you might be asking, how, why is there 20 when there's, we just see four? But you remember these blocks have it on the outside as well and bottom. So it was a total of 20 textures that we changed. So using the replace is very handy.